Hello, welcome to Brandon Socket in this video. Uh, it's my first manager video and it's probably the number one question I get uh, and it's adding a user to dealer socket. So we're gonna jump right in here and you're basically gonna go as a manager, you're gonna scroll to the little sprocket here. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's gonna load up and top right on Blackbird, you will see dealership users. And again, top right green buttons, your, sorry, blue button, you're not going to start to where you hit the green button and you're going to go new. Here is the information you need. First name, last name, franchise is going to default to your dealership, manager, who do they report to, team, if you're a salesperson, you probably have a sales team. If you're a sales manager, you probably have a sales manager. If you're a larger dealership and this team member is within a team, you're going to select that team name. So in this case here, I'll just put salesperson, DMS employee ID. This is different across the board. I do know, for instance, in Ontario, if you're a Surti slash Merlin dealership, it's going to be your OMVIC license number. If you're in a Reynolds uh, system, it's your customer number or your employee number. Uh, so it, it varies from dealership to dealership and DMS to DMS. Best way to troubleshoot it, go find your username or another salesperson's username in DealerSocket, reference their DMS, <clears throat> find that, reference their DMS ID in DealerSocket, go to your DMS and pull their profile up so you can see what number that is, and then again, get that, that employee's number. So I'll just go, uh, okay, perfect. Job title, this is something you type in so you can change it if they change rule, sales consultants, whatever you call uh, your staff, uh, 905 456 <clears throat> Email account, this is gonna be their work email address, okay? Reply email, do not put a work email, you're gonna have a rep reply, uh, something along those lines, salespeople reply in here. That's a, a unique email that goes out on behalf of every salesperson because when we send an email, we send the friendly name of salesperson's name and we attach HTML so we know who to send the notification to. So please don't change that. You can also put mobile number in there. So when you hit save and exit, <clears throat> it will send this auto-generated username and a temporary password to this account email. When the user picks that up, they go to bb.dealersocket.com, log in with a temporary password, and they'll have to enter another email a recovery email. This should not be your work email, it should be like your, your personal Gmail account, so on and so forth. So that's the steps to creating a user. While we're on the topic of creating, I'm gonna talk about inactivating a user because there's uh, two very important steps. Dealerships only make one of those important steps. Okay, <clears throat> we'll save and close. Let's see if it gives me an error in case I forgot something. I don't think I did, so we should be good. Okay, perfect. So we've created that user of Jaden, so I'm gonna search him. We're just in a test site here. So Jaden Alexander leaves us, gets fired, whatever you know scenario may be. So step one, you're gonna move them to inactive, but before we get to that step, I should have replaced it with another step. <laughs> the team name has to be changed to inactive. We have an inactive team on every single site. The reason we have this is sometimes you round robin events, you round up in opportunities. We're about to round robin or reassign customers that were Jaden's. And so if he's he or she is on a salesperson team, he will still get some of those leads back to him. It's just a functionality uh, process. So we've marked him inactive. Step two, untick the active and hit save. You're now gonna be prompted. His name goes red <clears throat> and now you'll be prompted do you want to use the reassignment tool to reassign their customers? I didn't in here because I had nobody in my name and it was a brand new user uh, and it wasn't really active, right? So you're going to want to make sure uh, when that prompt comes up, you select yes, select yes, and then you go to the reassignment tool setting. I'll do a separate video on reassigning. Uh, the link's up above, so feel free to click on it. But thanks for watching. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you soon.